If you could all please stand. You know, timing is everything, and here I am down in my last month, and I was almost late. Technically, I think I was. Thank you for all rising. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. couple of notes for those uh, needing our thoughts and prayers and memories. Um, we have uh, Denny Skinner, former district governor and, uh, and act, very active in the uh, Nevada uh, club. And also um, it has come to my attention that Tammy Colbeck's father-in-law passed away last week. So that's Richard Colbeck uh, in the Cedar Rapids area. So we'll keep the Colbecks in the, in the Skinner family are there any others that would like to uh, share any other information that I could look to adding to our list? Okay, let's take a moment, please, and remember them and others. Thank you. You may be seated. And Karen, it just occurred to me. Introduce a few guests here, if we could. Uh, Judge, uh, I'm not sure where you are, and you have a special guest to share. Yeah, uh, hold, hold on, and we'll get the microphone to you. Uh, special guest today, Rachel Patnot is with us. Uh, she's our assistant development director at the Boys and Girls Club. Been with us about three months, and so uh, she's out uh, helping me raise funds for the kids of the Boys and Girls Club. So welcome to Rachel. Thank you for joining us today, Rachel. Appreciate that. Anyone else? I think that's it. I'm, I'm going to start doing a dance here because our honored guest isn't here. Um, well, with that, let's take the opportunity and turn it over to Dr. Bannon. And John. I'm sorry, John. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, we haven't met for a bit, so I'm expecting you've all rested your voices. So let's really bring it out today on the welcome song, Words Are Above. gentlemen much appreciated well as is always the first meeting of the month we uh, recognize birthdays and anniversaries and members and today's birthday are up there and if you have on that list would you please stand so that we may serenade and recognize you is June anniversaries. It's a two-pager. And that is roughly one-third of the entire club, no, 20% of the entire club. So I expect at least 20% of you to be standing in the next minute or two to be recognized in your anniversary. So if you have an anniversary during this month, please stand and let us serenade you. Happy anniversary. Quite an impressive list, isn't it? 
And last but not least, recognition of our members. So if you're a member that joined us during the month of June, if you would please stand and just quickly be recognized. And we go all the way, what is it, 38 years down to one year. So we have some new ones. Do we have any of those members that are here with us today on that list? We have a couple. Thank you, Warren. Appreciate that. Oh, well, oh Jenny's already standing, trying to get food. <laughs> Well, thank you folks for your membership and obviously your participation is greatly, greatly appreciated. I have one other individual wanting to share an, an oh, let's recognize those that helped uh, last, well, the Thursday before Memorial Day, boy, a lot of time has gone by, hasn't it? Regarding um, the Special Olympics. This is a picture of those that were involved Quite a wonderful representation. So thank you for your participation. And Roger, always thank you for your efforts in helping to have that coordinated. It is an incredibly meaningful event. And now, Miss Deb, if you would like to come and share a word or two. Oh, well, you come on up. I'll stand up and we'll be buddies. Um, Forgot there's a uh, Iowa Cubs baseball game for Rotarians coming up. What night is that? Uh, the, the, I can't read that. 13th, June 13th. So please make yourselves available for that if you can uh, as a district opportunity to be involved with Rotarians across the area. And enjoy, a, I think, probably a wonderful Cubs game. Now, let's hear a little bit about what's going on in the community. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I just wanted to let you know that tomorrow evening is the last uh, city's community conversation. So we've had a series of six community conversations with topics around mental health. And tomorrow night at the Ames Public Library in the auditorium from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Um, is our last um, in the series. And the topic is civility in conversations. And this one's a little bit different because we are um, bringing a presenter in to uh, present the information, and it is Scott Racker. And Scott is the director of the Robert D. and Billy Ray um, Center at Drake University in Des Moines. And he's going to present a variety of topics. There'll be some interactive um, activities for the participants, and um, it'll also be live, st live streamed and then posted on the city's website. So 6.30 tomorrow night the Ames Public Library and the Auditorium. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. And just a wonderful time again for our community activity and for us to be involved in the areas on the conversations occurring in the city of Ames. Well, with that, I now have the opportunity to introduce George, who will introduce our speaker for today. And there's, um, again, to recognize George was recently highlighted at our district conference for his contributions to Rotary and in no small part to the topic that we're visiting about today. Thank you, George. Well, the Secretary of State and his staff member were across the street at the Golf and Country Club looking for us, <laughs> but they got here, thank goodness. It's really a great honor and a pleasure for me to introduce our Iowa State uh, Secretary of State Paul Pate to our club. As some of you may know, for the last six years, I've been putting all my volunteer time into the fight against human trafficking, and in particular, Rotary's global fight against trafficking, uh, where I serve on the international board of the Rotary Action Group against slavery called RAGUS and I'm currently the vice chair of the international board. Uh, I also uh, chair a Rotary District 6000 action group, and that action group is put together to prevent human trafficking. We now have 20 Rotary clubs out of our 67 clubs in District 6000 that are all uh, meeting together, we meet every month, and we, uh, e in each community, they are promoting 
the program we're about to hear about from the Secretary of State, but also uh, putting up stickers, uh, doing community awareness programs, and some of them uh, have now, uh, are now doing prevention programs in the schools. 20 clubs in our district, so that's really great progress. Um, our Ames Club is represented on this action team for District 6000 by Randy Peters. Randy has attended all 13 of our meetings and she's always there. Uh, she's going to staff the booth, the information table. We have posters and uh, all kinds of information uh, about legislation um, and what's going on in Iowa. We also have a, a, a blog post that I author, comes out at least once or twice a month with an update on the fight against tr human trafficking. If you'd like to be in receipt of that uh, blog post newsletter, uh, we have a sign up at the information table. But the big thing at the table are uh, stickers. You know, these, ant these anti-trafficking uh, rescue stickers, hotline stickers, this club came up with the idea of a sticker and that uh, was funded by one of the grants that our club gives out every year. That has now uh, uh, spread statewide and uh, most of these 20 rotary clubs that are in the uh, Action team, you know what? They're putting stickers up in 20 different communities. We are now up to over 15,000 stickers that have been posted with the National and Iowa Anti-Trafficking Hotline. So you may wonder and <laughs> be asking yourself uh, what all of this has to do with Iowa Secretary of State, our program speaker today. Uh, last year, Secretary Pate uh, launched a really unique, one-of-a-kind in the country anti-trafficking initiative that has really made a positive impact on trafficking awareness in our own state. I can't tell you how much I admire what he has done. Uh, Iowa's Ro Rotary Action Team, the 20 clubs I was talking about, has joined forces with Secretary of State, and he's spoken at most of the clubs, I think, encouraging them to get uh, this, pro to help uh, launch this program across the state. Uh, and now it's our club's turn uh, to hear from Secretary of State and to participate in the IBAT program. So that is uh, the connection. I want to tell you that. I work with a lot of elected officials in Iowa, but of all the elected state government leaders in Iowa, Paul Pate has made the most outstanding contribution to fighting human trafficking here in Iowa of any of them. It is indeed an honor to introduce Ames Rotary to Iowa's Secretary of State, Paul Pate. Thank you for those kind words and, and introduction. It's a pleasure to be here at your Rotary Club. I did have my golf clubs in the car. <laughs> so I'm gonna make this quick. <laughs> uh, it, it is really is exciting to, to be here with you today. Uh, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir a little bit, <clears throat> so I apologize if you've heard a little bit of this information before, but it is a message that I think we can't hear enough, and we wanna make sure we can put it out there where we can. I'd like to start with just a brief video, if I could, just to give you an overview of what Iowa Businesses Against Trafficking is all, all about, and then I'll give you a few remarks and we can uh, share a mission, if you will, on how we're going to go out and tackle this. It's like the Golden Globe Awards here. I'm 
to go back to the days of flip charts. You can't screw that up. You really can't. Shall we do it the old school way? <laughs> All right. Well, we're going we're gonna to pass on the Hollywood side and go right down to the, to the meat and potatoes uh, of what we're talking about today. Some might ask, you know, why the Secretary of State uh, in dealing with human trafficking? And I would submit to you, why not? Uh, it's a bully pulpit. It's a statewide official. But more importantly, the Iowa Businesses Against Trafficking, the natural tie-in is the fact that we have over 260,000 businesses that go through our portals uh, in my office. So it was a natural connection to be able to reach out and build on that. But it got started, uh, quite frankly, over a year ago when Christy Johnson, who's in the back of the room trying to figure out what's going on, my deputy uh, and I were in Cedar Rapids listening to Chains Interrupted doing a presentation on human trafficking. And I'm listening to this presentation and I'm, frankly, I'm taken back because I'm the former mayor of Cedar Rapids and I'm listening, and I still live there, it's my primary residence, and I'm listening to them talk about how this is going on in my community. And I'm thinking, really, come on. Now, as a mayor, I dealt with public safety and we dealt with economic development, we dealt with roads and water and all the things a mayor does. And yeah, we talk about prostitution and how we had to deal with massage parlors and that, Never were we talking about how big this issue was and how it was slipping between the cracks and not getting the attention it needed. And to me, that was a real eye-opener. And as we were driving back to Des Moines after that, Christy and I were talking, and I'm going, we've got to do something about this. It's, this you know, it just seems that there's got to be something here. And the connection really is even more so because uh, seven years ago, I started a program here in Iowa called Safe at Home which is an address confidentiality program for survivors of domestic and sexual violence, human trafficking, stalking, and assault. And it provides a, a legal substitute address and a mail forwarding and also confidential voter registration and voting by absentee ballot. And I note, I said human trafficking. We have people in our own program who have been trafficked. And it took this presentation in Cedar Rapids to give me that wake up call, okay? I'm, I'll be upfront about that. It really took that, that message to get there. So here we are dealing with our Safe at Home program uh, that had grown to 1,200 participants in over 77 counties. And I underscore that because everyone thinks these issues, whether it's human trafficking or domestic violence or sexual assault, they think those things are only in the Polk County, the Lynn County, the big counties. And it isn't, it's everywhere. And that's unfortunate, and we need to do more if we're going to be able to turn this around. And through our Safe at Home program, we were involved because voter registration is under my office, and it seemed wrong that we were penalizing people who were trying to put their lives back together and did not want the bad actors to know where they lived. And to vote, to reg vote in this state and to register, you have to give your address out, and it's public record. And that didn't seem right that these people who were struggling to come out of the shadows and come back into what we'd call maybe a normal life, mainstream, that they would be penalized like that. So that's how Safe at Home got launched. And my office basically now handles the forwardings, all their mail, and handles voter registration, gives them a legal address, that they, a substitute address they can use, and if the bad actor did find out that address, they'd end up in the middle of the Des Moines River. And I think that's a great place for them to go. Uh, so that's a program that is, is, is there. Uh, I look forward to the day that we don't need it. But until that day, we will work with that program. But that was kind of the, t the next tie-in, if you will. We partnered with the, the Network Against Human Trafficking, Dr. George and his group, uh, early on. Because the one thing I underscore here, I don't claim to be the expert on human trafficking. I'm not a trained advocate or counselor. There are specialists. There are experts people that we count on to really work with these folks. But I do have that bully pulpit. I do have the ability to put people together and raise an awareness on an issue that's so important. Because I think you'll share with me the same feeling. I think Iowa's the greatest state there is. I think my community is one of the best communities there is. But it's not the best for everyone yet. And until everyone has what I have, and maybe all of you have in some way or another, we're not done. 
they need to feel safe. They need to know that they have that same quality of life and opportunity that we take sometimes for granted. And my parents instilled upon me at an early age, you have to give back. That's what public service is about. And I salute Rotary for that. They are a big partner in that. And the fact that your district stepped up and, and the state uh, groups have stepped up and the na international Rotary has stepped up is amazing. And that's what we need to do more of. But I want to underscore, we don't want it to be a flash in the pan. We don't want it to be just, it's the cause of the year. It's got to be something, unfortunately, we're going to have to keep working. We're going to keep building that army to battle this until it's gone. And we need to grow that army beyond the borders of Story County, beyond the borders of Iowa, beyond the borders of the Midwest. It truly is an international effort, and we'll keep doing that. But we've got great partners. As I mentioned again, the Network Against Human Traffic, and we've leaned on them to be our technical experts as we've identified all the various advocates across the state, and we've built out a website that can funnel the information to people so that they have that resource available to them. And we encourage the groups that I visit with, these businesses, to tap into those, to bring those kind of experts into their organizations to share the message and share solutions and share ways to raise the awareness. And some of the other partners we've been very fortunate to work with is the Iowa Department of Public Safety. Uh, a couple years ago, we passed legislation that requires hotels and lodging. To, uh, if you want state dollars for us state employees to be staying in your facilities, you need to put your people through a human trafficking training program. Very brief, about 20, 30 minutes. And that, quite frankly, was resisted originally. But after it's been out, they acknowledge it isn't the worst thing that could happen to them, and it's actually been a benefit because it does raise an awareness. I mean, it's common sense. We all kind of think, well, where are they going? We have hotel, motel is <clears throat> one of the primary locations this trafficking issue might be happening. So that was a step. But we also partnered with the Iowa Department of Transportation's uh, enforcement people, the blue coats, I call them, that are out there on the highway working with truckers because uh, they worked very closely with that industry, and they're one of our best partners on the national level for human trafficking. They have a fantastic, very impressive program on awareness. Uh, I, I take their newsletter and I plagiarize it, and they know it welcomely, all the stuff they're sharing for information, but they are constantly educating those truck drivers to be out there looking for things and helping report it and help with that kind of a cause. And our DOT friends are making themselves available, too, to go to service clubs and other places and talk and share the message with them. We started the Iowa Businesses Against Human Trafficking because, as I said, we have 260,000 businesses that interface with my office alone. And I felt there's a way to start that. And as a business owner myself, and as I alluded to a moment ago, as growing up, it was instilled upon me that you give back. And that's what businesses do. I mean, they have an investment in your community. They're there. They employ people. And in most cases, the owner lives there as well. So there's a natural tendency that they want to see their community better, too. So reaching out to them was our idea of trying to build this army to make us more successful in what we're going to do. We launched it. We have over 620 businesses now joined with us. Uh, in 91 of the 99 Iowa counties. These are chambers of commerce. These are rotary clubs like your own. These are uh, restaurant associations. Uh, uh, we have Hy-Vee and Casey's and, uh, and uh, Fairway. The list goes on and on of businesses small and large alike. And I underscore that, small and large alike, because as I talk to some of these smaller businesses, particularly when I'm traveling, and they come back to me and I, and I say, you don't mind me asking, what made you join us? And they looked at me and said, like, well, again, why not? You know, this is our town. We want a good town. We want everyone to feel safe in our town. We want this to be good for everybody. And these are, like I said, mom and pop shops, florists, accountants, uh, yoga studios, you name it. They're of all types of companies who have joined us in this endeavor. And what we ask them to do is two things. We ask them to learn about it and to do something. And that's going to vary from, uh, to some extent on what they choose to do. And our website is designed to give them ideas because we take it from their peers. A little peer pressure never hurts. And we tell them, these are some basic things you can do. Uh, I use my business for an example. I have a construction company in Cedar Rapids. And, and what we did is, is we, every year when we start our season out, we put all of our employees through a basic 
15, 20 minutes on what's human trafficking and what to look for. And I, we remind them, this is not Hollywood, folks. This isn't the, the, that, that scene where the van pulls up, some guys jump out, throw a hood over your head, toss you in the van, away you go. This is the real world. So it comes with a lot of different looks. So tra human trafficking isn't just one particular look. Uh, and particularly when you get, throw in labor trafficking on top of that, it gets really complicated, particularly for us business owners. And we have to be sensitive to that as we go forward. And, and I know it's not easy, and I've shared that with our business friends. And that's why I've encouraged them to tap into the experts for advice and insight so they can be better at what they're doing, uh, what to look for, if you will. And it's worked very well, and we're very pleased with the kind of responses. But as I said, we do a little orientation. Uh, we also have our IBAT sticker uh, that we put up on our window of our office so people know about us, kind of like the gold star, letting people know this is uh, a place that is fighting human trafficking. Uh, we uh, put it on our Facebook and our website uh, and of our company. We are mailing out to our uh, clients and our uh, uh, vendors. I figure if they're going to take my money, they're going to listen to me <laughs> and, and give them a pitch on why they ought to be helping on this important issue. So these are just little things my small company can do. And we've had others who have put many billboards on their vehicles and trucks. Doll Distributing put it on the sides of their trucks. Uh, the, uh, the folks uh, from Fairway are going to be doing the same thing. We've seen uh, locations, as Dr. George mentioned, who have been very, very good about putting the little stickers in all their bathrooms. And, and they sound like little things, but they do work. They do work. We've had many success stories of how they've worked. And uh, when, when they're willing to share them with us publicly, we share them out with others. And an example is the Casey's folks. They have shared with us the story of a lady who was being trafficked, and she was in a Casey's, and the bad actor was putting fuel in the car. She was in the lady's restroom, and uh, she went to the counter, the pizza, pizza counter, and said, I'm being trafficked, I need help. They hid her in the back, locked the bathroom door so the bad actor thought she was still in there, called the police, the police come, intercede, and haul this guy away. Got her out of a bad situation. Now, I'm going to advocate very clearly to you. As businesses, I am not asking you to be a policeman. I'm not asking you to be a hero in the sense of putting yourself in harm's way. But you can be a good neighbor. Considered like a neighborhood watch concept. If you see something that looks wrong, it probably is. So don't hesitate to alert law enforcement. They need your help as the eyes and ears of your community. So let them do the investigating, and they can determine. And if it's nothing, well, fine. Better safe than sorry. And these actors have gotten much more aggressive because the pressure's been on them. And they, they don't have the same opportunities that they had before, uh, you know, just using a motel or be out there uh, and be available to doing what they do. They lean on social media as their vehicle to advertise. Uh, ads saying, hey, I've got a 12-year-old little boy here. If you'd like to have spend some time with them, uh, we'll just line you up. And they do, and they come to rural Iowa. They're not coming into Des Moines. They're going out into the more rural area, and they're either renting a house there or a mobile home or maybe even a motel in some cases. And, and these bad actors, or these sickos, I call them, are coming in from uh, far away, in many cases, and paying money to violate these young people and others. So it isn't easy to pin these down. But if, again, as a neighborhood watch concept, if you're seeing cars from out of state at weird hours coming in for short times and then leaving, it's suspicious. And even if it's not trafficking, it's probably another bad thing. I mean, the meth heads have moved out to the rural area. They're not, they're not doing meth in downtown Ames, okay? They're, not, they're moving farther out so law enforcement and others don't see them. So we're leaning on the neighborhood watch. And knowing some of the signs of human trafficking, as I mentioned to you a moment ago, there is no one clear description so that makes it a little hard, but the signs that you look for are, are signs of a problem. So if they're not human trafficking, they're probably another serious issue. Our young people today have serious, serious depression issues. Teen suicide is very high. So when you're looking at some of these young people and when they are withdrawing, when they start not talking to their parents, or they have different friends that you don't know who they are, or they're secretive about their cell phone, or they have secret apps on their phone. This can be a sign of trafficking. It could also be a very serious sign of some other problem. 
So again, being alert to these things going on around you, that's not wrong. That's, I think that's a fair thing to do. But looking at some of these items we have up here on, on, our, on our chart, of each, which you can watch for, uh, these people in trafficking have gotten so blatant about it that they're even branding these, these, these people with tattoos, like livestock. Uh, they, they, it's, it's just a very s sad and sickening situation. The more you hear about it firsthand, you, your stomach, you, you just can't believe this is really happening in our communities. We have people who are trafficked while they're at home. Their parents may not even know it because they've been trafficked by a boyfriend or a special friend that uh, connected with them on social media and the parents aren't even aware of it. There are people who are being trafficked by their own families. That's a sad time. So again, we don't have one clear line for you to say this is the profile, but we do ask for you to look out for your neighbor, to look for signs of problems, and hopefully reach out and help them in some fashion. I want to leave you with the, the, the sign, if you will, to watch for, the hand sign that, that you can help save lives, and it just tells you need help. So if you all raise, just raise your right hand. You're not taking an oath of office. <laughs> just bring your thumb in and your hand down. Do that like three times. See how easy that is? So now you know if you need help, you can use that sign. But also when you're out and about in your car or someplace and someone is doing that, you, you, it's a sign. You know they, might, they need help. Let's, let's get them that help. And that's what law enforcement's for. We do have toll-free numbers we offer, hotlines, but let's be clear about it. If it's an immediate issue, it's 911, folks. It's 911. Let the law enforcement get in there and take care of what's going on. Uh, and that's what we're gonna keep pushing. We've had good success uh, in reaching out to people. Uh, last summer, the city of Ankeny has a big summer festival. They uh, embraced what we were doing, and they did a training with all their volunteers for their festival. And if you haven't been there, it's a huge, huge festival. And they trained their volunteers what to look for in human trafficking. They had little poster billboards up for it. They put the stickers and the porta potties out there as a way to bring awareness to it. Uh, our hy V friends are working with us on, on, at their stores. Casey's has been doing it for some time. A lot of people have stepped up on, on this, and I think it helps immensely. And we've had several stories and reports back of how it has helped intercede and break the, the bonds, if you will, of this trafficking situation and free these people from a bad, bad place. Now, you can help us, and you already have as a rotary, and I appreciate that, and I thank you. You can help us by joining our efforts. Uh, it's real simple. It's uh, IVAT. Dot Iowa dot gov, and we would include you in our mailings that we put out, uh, and it just brings it, you attention to what things other companies are doing and other organizations are doing, so perhaps you might want to encourage your groups to do the same. It gives you some ideas right down to some templates of things you can share within your family and your business. Uh, these are the basic steps, because I believe as we build out we should have over a thousand businesses and organizations in this easily. And with those kind of numbers, I gotta believe we can beat this. We can beat this. Now there's a lot more to it than what we're talking about today with you. What I'm bringing is just a, is an awareness to the issue. Uh, we still have to deal with some of the other bigger issues, the root of the problem, uh, the kind of help that these people need to keep them out of this system of being trafficked. And frankly, once they've been trafficked, that's a whole other story. And I'm sure your club can have a speaker come in on that. These people go through a long period, a long period of trying to put their lives back on track. And it's not a cheap endeavor. And these advocates and organizations out there who are doing it are nonprofits, and they could use the assistance and help. So there's a lot of ways we can all step up and be a part of it. I hope you'll uh, join me in doing that as well, because I think there's a lot of opportunities uh, for us to step up and uh, get this message out loud and clear. I think uh, the best thing I've seen and heard is our own Department of Public Safety has said they've seen a huge uptick of awareness, more calls on our hotline, more people wanting information over the last year or so. I'm not gonna sit here and say it's all what we did at IBAT, but it's a, it's a collection of everybody's efforts these past year of raising that awareness. 
Uh, the Attorney General's office is now being very aggressive and stepping in and being a partner. The governor has pledged additional support and going into the budget cycle for helping more. Uh, these are all positive steps. And as Rotary itself continues to promote it in its chapters across the, not only the state of Iowa, but internationally, I gotta believe we're making progress. And statistically speaking, we're just getting a good start on getting those numbers. Unfortunately, in the past, trafficking was lost in the mix. It was treated as prostitution, or it was treated as drugs, or it was treated as a theft. It wasn't listed as trafficking. So we, we didn't have hard numbers, but the numbers that the Attorney General's office had from 2020 uh, was, was several thousand that they identified uh, that were trafficked in Iowa. And that's the tip of the iceberg because they clearly didn't have all their numbers. Uh, and so I'm not sure what our numbers are. And until we can start tracking it, we can't really tell how our war on human trafficking is going. So until then, I'm committed to putting everything we've got against it so that we can keep battling it as we go forward. Some questions uh, or suggestions we'll be happy to take back for you. Thank you. And I'm not gonna be shy if you ask me a question I don't know the answer to, I'll tell you. <laughs> so uh, Dan Devine, I was president years ago when we got one of those grants going. For about 10 years I've been doing work with um, Break the Cycle, Rocky Vest, who was awarded by the governor a couple of years ago. They partnered up with Hope for Justice. Are you familiar? I know they work with Iowa Department of Public Safety, and you work, just mentioned them. Do you work at all with them? And the Hope for Justice, which is an international group, and they hired a state investigator for Iowa. Yeah, yeah I am familiar with those. And well, I try to serve as an amplifier because my department isn't huge and my legislature is very frugal. Uh, so what I do is really on the lean. And may, the biggest thing we've done is we've just tried to amplify the message of so many good groups, like whether it's Dr. George's group or other groups, we bring that to the, the table. Uh, I have to be very careful about not misrepresenting that we are the human trafficking expert or czar uh, by any means, because there's some really talented people out there who, who know this game a lot better, and are, that's the people we want to get the information to or the support to. Secretary, uh I notice in your slides, we have eight counties that are not involved. Right. Do you want to make any comment about that and who they are? <laughs> As the summer goes on, if you want, if you all join me and, and, and become part of our group, you're going to see us profiling. We need to get those, those last counties on board. Uh, it's really more about, I need to spend one more time on the telephone calling a couple of those Chamber of Commerce friends of mine and going, come on guys, you're, just, you're looking bad. And I bet there's even a Rotary Club up there somewhere, too, if we can put a little arm on. We'll get there. Thank you, though. Jim Moore, I have a question and an alert. The question is, uh, I thought I saw that the legislature had increased the uh, penalties in, in uh, law uh, for traffickers. They this have. Year. They have. Didn't they make it lifetime, um, or pretty much a lifetime just sentence? I don't, traffickers. I don't remember the exact, but they have, uh, and that's a step in the right direction, but it really, you ask law enforcement officials, they need more help identifying these people. Because they use social media, it's not like they're a brick and mortars place, you know. When you were kicking in a, a night of, uh, when you were kicking the doors of a house of ill repute, can't even say it, uh, or a massage parlor, that's one thing, but these people are playing out of their cars and moving around quite regularly. It's extremely challenging. They go where the money is or they go where they can hide, so. The other one is an alert on July 3rd, that is the Monday before the 4th of July, there is a new Hollywood movie out called uh, um, Sound of Honor. And it is on trafficking. It is on, on, on international traffic, trafficking. The star of it is Jim Caviezel, whom you may or may not remember from The Passion of Christ. Mm -hmm. And he is the most, one of the most intense actors in Hollywood today. And it's in Cinemark Theater here in town. There are going to be five showings during the day on uh, Tuesday, July 3rd. Okay. 
I appreciate that. I'll, I'll look into it more because if we're going to show it in other parts of the state, we'd love to pr promote it and get that information out there. Okay, great. Yes, yes sir. I got a mic mic behind you if you want it. <laughs> uh, I, years ago in the 1970s, yeah, I was a taxi cab driver in Denver, mm -hmm. yeah, and I don't think there was any kind of education for uh, spotting these issues and responding to them. Yeah, and the one memory that sticks in my mind is picking a, a young black woman up <coughs> from a housing project area of town and taking her to a hotel, and she was softly weeping the whole way. Mm. Yeah, and, and I was like, I don't know what to do. Yeah, the, the, I don't think we had ever, as cab drivers, had any briefing right. on how to respond to that kind of situation when we ran, in, ran into it. Yeah. That's probably better now, but I wonder if it's as complete as it could be. It's why we all have to work together. As I said, we're building an army, or you can call it a choir, to be able to keep putting the message out there. I know through our Safe at Home program, we spend a lot of time reaching out to groups, whether they are dentists, doctors, nurses, uh, hairstylists, people who interface with potential victims so that they can help get them the help they might need when it, those kind of things happen. Uh, we'll continue to support that. Uh, we would encourage it. As a former mayor of Cedar Rapids, I worked with taxi drivers because that was one of our first things was on a couple fronts. One, they are ambassadors because you know they pick people up at the airport and that. The games change with Uber and, and those guys because that's a whole other world and they're much harder to reach to do the same kind of a training as we'd like to do. But I hope, and I, I hold out hope, I should say, that we can continue to put the message out so more people kind of tune into it and help out with it. Uh, and that's what we'll keep building on. Other questions, since, sir? Since, yeah. since we're in an educational um, institution community, I'm wondering if there are special efforts to, that are trying to get the um, members of those communities aware of this as well. And, Who's taking the lead on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, the schools, I can't speak for the universities as well, but I know the K-12 in many, many cases have been stepping up to that. In fact, a lot of the, several of the businesses who are part of our IBAT program, they've taken it upon themselves that they're looking at going to the school districts and asking, can we bring in an advocate group to talk to kids? Uh, so you know, grassroots does work, it does work. The Network Against Human Trafficking, which is a statewide nonprofit, um, got a group started at, U at Iowa State called Network Against Human Trafficking. They have programs, they uh, reach out to uh, Wings of Refuge and other uh, local and regional areas that are, are programs that are actually working uh, to rehabilitate and uh, integrate back into society sex trafficking victims and survivors. Uh, they uh, just had a big, uh, you know, sign up uh, for next year, and they had 30 more students join their club. So it's really growing. And um, also, Iowa State does have a uh, class on human trafficking. Um, it's a real expert who, who is uh, providing that uh, class and it, it's always sold out, showing a lot of interest. We've had uh, several speakers uh, at the Great Hall of Memorial Union, three of them, and um, it's always been sold out. There's a lot of interest on campus. There's also a uh, survivor who was from a rural area and was, um, went to a college here in Iowa, first time away from home, and she uh, met a guy on campus who started dating her. He wasn't actually a student, but she didn't know that, and she was traffic, lured into trafficking, missing from her family for six years. 
she uh, w uh, was rescued and uh, she now is a full-time worker at YSS. Yeah, so it can happen. So a lot is going on in our community and on campus. What we need is groups like that, student groups on every campus in Iowa, and we also need to have uh, the students educated. I'd like to touch, if I could, on the other side of, of uh, human trafficking, that's the labor side, because, there's, again, Hollywood and real world, okay? There, there seems to be this image that they think all labor trafficking is illegals. In reality, I would submit to you, I think a significant number of those are here legally, but they are being taken advantage of. Uh, just, uh, it's, and it's not fair to use this analogy, but I can't come up with a better one, but if you can visualize like a headhunter, how the service they would provide, a legitimate employment scenario, that's what the, these people are doing with these folks that they're bringing in here legally. They take them into a business and get them their job, get them set up, but then they, they control them. They hold their passports, they hold their visas, they hold their, all their documentations, they collect their paychecks, uh, very, very controlling, and in many cases, threatening. In some cases, it's again, family, family who have become citizens bringing in more family in and then take advantage of them on the labor side of this. And this is here in Iowa. It is. We had a serious case of up in Northwest Iowa that's still in the courts. We've had cases down in Ottumwa. We've had cases all around us uh, that they just don't always see the headline, but it is there. And as an employer myself, it is, it's a very uh, challenging situation because we do not wish to be profiling. You know, you suppose somebody doesn't speak English uh, fluently and they want to work for you, how do you, you know, handle those things? Uh, it's not an easy walk, I guess is a polite way of putting it, but I encourage businesses to let some of the experts, particularly if they're hiring a lot of those types of employees, maybe for the type of jobs they're doing, to be bringing in experts who can guide them through that process to make sure that they're uh, doing everything A, legally, and B, uh, looking out for the welfare of some of those employees. Now, you know, the more you can, I guess, get to know your employee, the better. I guess that's a very simplistic answer uh, because if they can open up to you and let you know they have a bad situation, you hope you can help them as an employer as well. But I just want to break that mold that they're all here illegally because that's not necessarily the case. Uh, so we want to make sure we're watching for all those fronts. And unfortunately, with what's going on at the border, we do hear more about that part of it. But it is a lot more complicated as we're going forward on some of that. Any other questions? My video does work now, and I want to show it to you because you know it's so impressive, and I'm not even starring in it, so it's a it's a it's a really good video. <laughs> so why don't we show that real quick, and then I'm going to put a close on it for everybody. Okay. Human trafficking is a form of modern day slavery, and it happens when men, women, or children are forced to perform labor, services, or sexual acts. Human trafficking affects thousands of people across the United States, and it can happen to anyone. But you can take action and join the fight to prevent this crime in Iowa. Iowa Businesses Against Trafficking, or IBAT, is a recognition and education program from the Iowa Secretary of State, Paul Pate, that helps local businesses prevent human trafficking through education and awareness. As a member of IBAT, your business can help educate employees, customers, and industry partners about the signs and impact of human trafficking in Iowa. By empowering others to learn something and do something, you can help make a difference in our communities. Joining is easy. Just apply for membership on our website at ibat.iowa.gov and we'll provide you with training and resources to equip you and your employees. As a part of IBAT, you'll receive a window decal to place in your business and be recognized publicly on our website and social media pages for your work to actively combat human trafficking. You can also help raise awareness through community outreach and education campaigns. Do your part and help prevent human trafficking. Learn something, do something. Join Iowa Businesses Against Trafficking at ibat.iowa.gov today. Please help us by joining our efforts uh, as busy as you might be, if you just take a couple minutes to go online to the uh, site that we mentioned, ibat.iowa.gov, 
we, and we have some forms over here. We'd be happy if you want to do it paper-wise, we can do it that way. Uh, the palm cards, did they get passed out, Christy? Great. Uh, between Safe at Home and IBAT, they are, are very good programs, and I hope that you'll kind of take that to heart. Uh, the Safe at Home side, I will tell you that there's not a person in this room who during their lifetime will not have someone they know who will be in a bad situation, either be a victim of domestic violence or sexual assault or stalking or human trafficked. Uh, so having that kind of filed in your head maybe is a reference for should you ever have that person in your life, you can give them a reference as, a, as another tool. And of course on the human trafficking front, you've already made a big step as a rotary in joining in this effort to battle it. We just like to be more, more formal. We want to get over that thousand mark and we want to have an army so large that the traffickers don't even want to think about coming to Iowa. And the success of this has been very good. We've already had uh, other states looking at doing the same thing. Uh, I'm a, a member of the National Association of Secretaries of State and we're presenting on this in July. We have uh, the state of Mississippi is modeling their program after ours. Uh, Kentucky is looking at doing the same. And I have several more who are going to be looking at this as, a, as an idea or a way to go about getting businesses more involved across the country. And that's the goal. The more people involved, the harder it is for these people to do what they're doing. And that's where we got to start. And I appreciate you letting me spend some time with you today and uh, sharing a message that you're already a supportive and trying to help us with. And I hope that, you, again, we'll just spend some time signing up with that. Thank you again for inviting me. We always have to do the presentation, which I 90% of the time forget, so I want to make sure, Secretary Pate, that we do that. What you've shared, obviously, is significant in the education that you're bringing to us. As sponsors of Raising Readers, we start with education for young people, and we give a book to two-year-olds on the Royal Checkup. We would like you to autograph one of these, and it will be given to a young person on that time when they go in. So, yeah, please. It's actually one of my big passions. My mother raised my brother and I as readers. Uh, it opens up a whole other world for you. So I'm glad you're doing this. Actually, I'm going to have you sign in another place. That, uh, I apologize. Let's grab right there. Let's use this. Let's use that. Let's use a pen that works. It's not government issued. Oh. Oh. At least I didn't use my joke. I'm from the government, and I'm here to help you. <laughs> <laughs> Only Ronald Reagan can pull that one. No, no. Okay, thank you. And thank also, you. we have a medallion I want to give you. This has the meaning of the four-way test on it. I don't know how many other clubs might give you that, but uh, Mr. Patton has shared these with me, and it's thank just you. another way to, for you to exhibit what we believe, and we'll share that. Thank well, you. I thank you, and I'm going to return that favor by... Uh, giving you one of my challenge coins. Uh, mine is uh, honor a veteran because mm -hmm. they put it on the line so we all have the right to vote. And I'll just leave this with you. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. Our pleasure. Thank you. You know, it's going to be maybe politically incorrect to share, but the statement was made up there in that video it's human trafficking, it is human slavery. And today we have a tendency to step away from that word, but that is actually what's going on. And if you put it into that term, I think it really brings to light what is going on in these young people's victim, victimized lives. So it's phenomenal what is occurring here. And thank you for the awareness that you're bringing to the state, George in particular, for what you are bringing internationally to Rotary. So thank you for your service and your dedication. We appreciate that. Uh, two quotes. You may choose to look the other way, but you can never say again that you did not know. How appropriate did we hear that today? That's from William Wilbefore. And then from Condoleezza Wright, former Secretary of State, defeating human trafficking is a great moral calling of our time. 
we've taken that big step in this club, this community, and hopefully internationally. So thank you all for your participation. We'll now take the opportunity to say the four-way test. If you'd please stand. Of the things we think, believe, and say. <laughs>